Hi, my name is Laurel Best, and in this video I tell you about the watercolor supplies I use. I hope you enjoy it. So, first off, I quite often sketch a drawing before I paint it, so I use a sketchbook, and this is the sketchbook I'm using right now. It's the Strathmore Sketch 400 series. I like it because it has a spiral bound edge, which allows me to open it right up easily. And I use a uh, Curry's 2H pencil. The 2H doesn't draw very darkly, which allows me to erase it easily if I'm actually using it on watercolor paper, which I sometimes do. Um, and I also use a kneaded eraser, which allows me to erase without creating little eraser bits. And I can also squeeze it into a particular shape to get into smaller areas. So that is the first set of supplies. Now on to the paint. For my paints, I like to use Winsor & Newton paints. You can get them in various sizes from this small size down here, this huge size here. Uh, what you're looking for in a paint is for it to say artist's color, watercolor. Okay, make sure it says watercolor and make sure it says artist quality. Uh, student quality just doesn't perform as well. So for beginners, all you need is the small size. It'll take you quite a while to go through that. Uh, but since I paint a lot, I, it makes more sense for me to buy in bulk. Uh, I have one Daniel Smith in here. It works well. Um, so my colors are Orlin yellow, Permanent alizarin crimson, and permanent is important because it will fade otherwise. Uh, cobalt blue, Prussian blue, a burnt sienna, and neutral tint, which is like a black. You don't have to have these exact colors, but similar colors, at least to the top three, are our primary colors, and, and they're important to have. So, um, here's a palette I like. It's small, it's got slanted wells and spot for the paint. So it's in a plastic bag right now. I save that plastic bag uh, to put on later to keep the dust out of the paint. So, I tend not to use the paint right from the tube unless I'm painting really large areas. So what I do when I get a new palette is I squeeze some paint into the paint well over here and then I let it dry for a day. But to remember what's on it, I in it I take a sharpie and write on the side. So this one uh, I'm going to write A W for Arlene yellow. Because sometimes you forget which color you have where. So uh, that those are my tubes. So here is a watercolor palette I've already set up. So in the order I like it, so I like my yellows, my reds, if I have multiple reds, my blues, and then my other colors. So I have a brown here, I happen to have a sap green here, and my neutral tint down at the bottom. It's just the order I, I like to go in. The slanted wells are nice as well because when you're mixing paint, it all gathers down at the bottom here. So there's a bit of a slant to that. Now on to brushes. So my brushes are in this handy dandy brush holder. You don't have to have it in a brush holder, but mine are. So I have my number, or sorry, one inch flat, my six round, my number three round, and my number one round for small details. Now my round brushes are all Curry's brand in this case. This is a fairly inexpensive brand, and what you're looking for in a watercolor brush is, first of all, for it to say that it's a watercolor brush. 
and not especially not an oil brush or an acrylic acrylic brushes can be okay but if it says it's a watercolor brush then that's much more reliable so what you're looking for is it for it to come to a nice point and be soft and flexible okay now this brand is really cheap the Zen brand but it performs pretty well and one inch brushes are pretty expensive whereas this Zen I believe I got for $3.99 no matter the size they charge $3.99 so I like to, to use Zen for that purpose so there's no special washing instructions for brushes you just rinse them out in water and you're good to go so that's it for brushing. For watercolor paper, I like the Canson XL watercolor paper for practicing. It's 140 pounds, cold press, and so it's got a little bit of texture to it, and it's heavy enough to withstand a fair bit. Um, but for my professional work, I use Arches watercolor paper. And if, one of the ways you can get it is in sheets. Uh, it's 140 pound cold press, same as the other. The difference is this one is 100% cotton. So that, when you're getting 100% cotton, you know you're, you're getting really good quality paper. So it comes in 20 2 by 30 inch wide and I cut it up into smaller packs. You get what you pay for in watercolor paper. So usually more expensive is better. Arches is about $10 a sheet. I need something to put your watercolor on called a support. This is my favorite. It's a Deserres watercolor art board. You stretch the paper, staple it down, let it dry, and it stays flat for you the whole time. The only downside is it's expensive, so this board costs $30. So your other options are a skinny board like this from an art store. Here I've used masking tape to take the watercolor down. The problem with this board is it can warp. It's inexpensive, but it'll warp. So a third option is a piece of wood. So this wood I got at Home Depot is half inch thick. It's not going to warp on you. And quite often you can find scraps in uh, the remnant pile. And for this one, I stretched the watercolor paper and used gum tape to attach the paper onto the board. This isn't going to move anywhere, it's not going to buckle, it's going to work quite well. A few other things I use when I'm painting are a paper towel, that's my main eraser. I also have a water dropper and a water sprayer. I get those in the travel section of my local dollar store. And two containers of water and I use large yogurt containers for that. That's all you need. Thanks for watching. Here are some of the places you can follow me.